What's going on, everybody? I hope you're all well, and welcome back to Dragon Age Origins. We did the Grand Oak's little quest line last episode, picked up the uh, acorn for him, got his branch, so we can pass through this mystical fog that would have otherwise turned us around. We did go back to the Dalish camp and turn in all the quests from the east part of the Brazilian forest, so we are ready to pursue Swift Runner. Figure out what's going on with these wolves and this curse. It's definitely not how Zathrium painted it out to be. There seems to be more than meets the eye going on here with all this. The Grand Oaks branch allows you to pass the barrier. Here's Swift Runner again. The forest has not been vigilant enough. Still, you come. You are stronger than we could have anticipated. The Dalish chose well, but you do not belong here, outsider. Leave this place. You would listen to me for a second. Why won't you let me try and settle this dispute? <sighs> you are sent by the treacherous Dalish to kill with a fang. I will not stand by and allow that to happen. Why do you call the Dalish treacherous? You attacked them. And they deserve no less. You are an intruder in our home. You come to kill, as all your kind do. We have learned this lesson well. Here, Witherfang protects us. Here we learn our names and our beloved. We will defend Witherfang and this place with our lives. Okay, well, there's really no need for this. He's really bad again, his points across. I'm here trying to have a conversation with you, Chuckles. I am not here to try and take your life. Well, if you continue to attack me and act the way you are, then I will be here to take your life. But that's not the intent I come here with. I think we found Witherfang. Big white wolf. This is the second time Swift Runner has attacked me. The third is not going to go as well for him. I ran out of patience with trying to communicate with the wolf. He can speak English, he's just refusing to. Onyx Demon Statue. That's very cool. Here's another gravestone for another piece of the Juggernaut set. Familiar warding runes are carved into this tombstone. Disturb the wards. Right, oh, let's see what we have. The Revenant is there, which means you need to be all the way over here. Alistair, you need to pop a torn, and I'm gonna go kill the little ads off on the side. Once they're all dead, everybody can focus on the Revenant, and this will be way easier. Just Alistair at this point to hold aggro pretty successfully. Wonderful. Now we just gotta deal with this guy. So we're gonna give him Mark of Death. Gonna sit behind him and chop that wood while Alistair holds the uh, aggro, hopefully. And that's the end of this rev. My build is getting very strong here. We're not even at the Beyblade of Death part of this build yet. We still got... We still cooking. <laughs> this build is definitely still in the oven. Remember how I said Rogue early game takes a while to uh, get off its feet. But late game it becomes like a Beyblade cheese grater. That's... We're still cooking that. That's gonna get the... Not that we're underpowered right now. We're very strong. We are invaded! Intruders have deceived their way into the forest's heart. Fall back to the ruins. Protect the lady. Yeah, but these wolves have done nothing but run from us since we got here. Not quite the rabid monster Zathrian described. The swift run of the wolf we keep talking to is, seems pretty insistent that the only reason they attacked the elves is for some kind of a revenge. But he won't tell us why, because he just assumes we're a puppet. Even though if that was the case, we would have already been attacking him. 
little hidden wall here. I went to the wrong side. Undead are weak to fire, and since we do have flame weapons and the flame runes on here, they're gonna take a lot of damage to this. Be nice and easy. Kind of look like uh, Dwaygar and Skyrim. Not Dwaygar. That's not what they're called. The uh, what are they called? Dregs. I don't remember what they're called. The uh, the little monster things inside the caves in Skyrim. The old Nords. Yeah, I'm not recalling what they're called. Let's get started. Let's see if there's anything across the hall. Just gonna try and work our way through this whole ruin piece by piece. The last piece of the Juggernaut armor set is this inside here. Place? Did the elves live underground, just like the dwarves? Maybe we got some wolf friends down here. They haven't aggroed to us yet. They're gonna throw their lives away for something totally unnecessary. This should be easy enough. No matter how much we tell them, when we just want to figure out what's going on, they're not gonna listen. It's gonna keep throwing bodies at us. Now this just screams hidden doorway. Am I gonna get the? Uh, you found a secret door. We get two piles of bones, we get Darmisu, which is a elven dagger, and a darkspawn dagger. Not sure what the darkspawn corpse would be doing down here. And now we have a main door, and a side door. Of course, we'll take the side door first. Don't want to miss anything down here. Lair of the werewolves, so since I know where that goes, head on back here, it's locked for now. We'll come back that way when we're done clearing this temple. Right. Take this one by one. I do want to clear it all. I don't want to miss anything. Pretty cool that we get to explore ancient elven temples. Despite the limitations that they had graphically back then, they do paint a pretty good picture of a ancient temple like this, like dilapidated and all beat up. Get the ceiling caving in with the god rays. This place can be tough for various reasons. There's going to be a lot of frustrating things going on here too, like that with Alistair. Here we go. Only one Man is still in web. Pop on immediately. Just get all these asshole things off my character. Again, anybody who has arachnophobia, I apologize. We will get through it though. Lots of getting frozen in place for 10 seconds at a time by these spooders, but can't keep us there forever. There's a shitload of loot here. I did hit the vendor off camera before I started this episode just to make sure I could pick up most of the stuff in here. See, we have around 40 slots. We're still probably going to run out. There's a lot in here to loot. I'm sure I'll have to start dismantling things at some point, but... As long as we open all the chests, it doesn't really matter if we pick everything up that's in them. We just want the XP from the lockpick. As long as I don't miss out on XP, I don't mind missing out on items. But if we got the space, I'm sucking it all up. I'm a loot goblin. It exists and it's mine. <laughs> I think there's something ahead. Something big. Your powers of observation are inspiring, Alistair. What gave you that hint? Trap. Trap. Okay. Trap. Trap. Let's do something. Trap. 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 Something on your mind? Uh, yes, these traps and not having you step on them actually. You have a dragon. Morgan, you don't need to stand so close. You know you're a mage, right? 
that first taste of dragon combo. You get to see all the fun abilities that the uh, the big ones have to. It's a mini dragon in comparison to what we will be fighting eventually. Kind of concerned about where this dragon's mama is. Heavy chain mail, no dragon scales, unfortunately. You can get him and take it to the dude in Denerim and get some armor from that. But we missed one pressure play. And there's the wind level. That is why I like dismantling every trap in the game. We will give you... Let's get you to 30 willpower and then I'll give you one magic. Like a 15 cunning is bothering me a little, but it's not our problem right now. Max out her herbal ore. She is our resident crafter. And at this point, we'll just work on getting her mage tree up, I believe. Life what I'm not so interested in. Cleanse and aura can wait, so let's work on getting her passives. I like passives because it's just a flat buff. I don't have to do anything about it. I can just let the game play as it plays. How much I micromanage my companions depends on what kind of mood I'm in in that day. A lot of times I prefer not to. Dragon Horde is a shitload of things. So we have a health potion, some long swords, Falun Din's Reach, which is a very good bow with rapid aim on it. We have 20 sovereigns, some floss bar, silver medallion, all kinds of loot right there. And of course, it is a unique weapon, so we get a codex on that. Falun Din is one of the elven gods we read about last time, actually. I think I was uh, supposed to go that it's way. Not. Hold that door one second. Indeed, this whole area is car for that. Okay. That I ran into something by mistake, though. Didn't want to miss the loot. Hit all three with the sweep. Lined up perfectly for us. Not too worried about micromanaging Alistair at this point. He can kind of do his own thing with a lot of this stuff. Up that wood. There are a couple encounters here that I'm going to be very worried about micromanaging, but for right now, not so much. I have a really good party tactic, so I don't need to worry about it. Right. All the time. Mainly just boss fights. This should be easy enough. Which is the beauty of the in-depth tactic system of Origins, which is very underrated. Dragon Age 2 has a decent one too. I think the tactics are the best in Origins. And then in Inquisition, the tactics are kind of non-existent. If you're not micromanaging your party, you're just not playing correctly so. in Inquisition. Which is ironic, because they tried to make that an action game and dumb it down for the masses, where... If you just explain to the masses how to play this game, they would never have to tab off their own character. They could play it like an action game and just have your companions do exactly what you want them to without ever pausing to be tactic, to be tactical rather. But of course, gonna dumb it down for the modern audience. The bane of my existence, really. We're gonna send that spider off Alistair because we do need him here actually for this development issue. And that's Morrigan with a level. Figured we'd end up with a few while we were down here. I believe I looted these rooms. Yes, I did. It's kinda hard to tell where you get jumped from or not sometimes. Go ahead and hit Morrigan's level in a second. Ah. I love it. <laughs> I love the spiders. Right, Morrigan. Let's give you 40 magic. You're fucking swollen brolic at this point. We eventually would like to give you... Uh, 
Arcane Warrior maybe for Morrigan. We won't be picking up Blood Magic, I don't think. I think we missed the only opportunity to grab that. Uh, I'm on a new PC, so I don't have all these unlocked. The beauty, again, let me just uh, touch on this. Each one of these um, class specializations, once you unlock them the first time on any playthrough, you will keep them forever. The game gives you the achievement for it, and you have it unlocked forever. So You can totally just reload at the uh, Demon with Kana, make the deal, reload back, you'll still have it unlocked, and then don't make the deal. You can totally do things like that. Don't know what I want to give Morrigan spec wise either, so we're also going to save her specialization point. Now you have Mana Clash. Walking Bomb and Death Siphon, things like this, are all really cool. Death Siphon specifically. This is so much friendly fire on Nightmare that it's almost not worth it if you have any melee combatants in your body because it makes things you kill explode. Which is cool and it works very good. But unfortunately. Friendly fire and nightmare is insane, and you will often nuke your own tank by doing that. Contagious hex inflicts penalties to cold resist. Okay, that's just resistances. What does weakness do? The caster drains the target of energy, inflicting penalties to attack and defense, as well as reduced movement speed unless it passes a physical resistance check. But that is almost just an extended version of vulnerability hex, right? Penalties to cold fire, nature, and spirit. Oh, I see. So, these are all just technically the same, just more advanced versions of it, I guess. Let's get weakness. We're actually going to dip into Morgan's tactics for a second. Instead of vulnerability hex, let's have her use weakness. Nerfing the resistances to cold and light and all that is cool, but I think I'd much rather have them just have less attack and defense, especially things like the revs. Are you looking for your mother? I can help you find her. Whoever you're looking for isn't here anymore. Well, he suddenly brought the Thunderdome to us. Alright, Morgan, let's do the cheeky thing with you that I like to do. That must stun out. House is doing very good at holding most of the aggro here. That in most of my mages do the thing. It, w it would be cool if Wynn would like back it up a little. Determined to get herself killed by standing in the middle of combat sometimes. Of large fights in here. I don't think Wynn has used her haste a single time by her uh, AI tactics. Fancy scroll in the tablet here. This earthen tablet is covered in pictographs. A carved elven tablet. Four panels reproduced here appear to be part of a much larger mural. The topmost panel shows a jug overflowing with water standing on an altar. Three elves in robes are positioned around the altar, while a crowd of elves in warlike regalia stands just slightly apart from them. Just below is a depiction of the elves, those in robes, and those in armor, prostrating themselves before the altar with worshipful expressions. Third from the top is a carving which shows one of the three robed figures, a woman with an elaborate tattoo on her face, drinking from the jug on the altar while the other elves watch. The bottom image shows the tattooed woman standing waist deep in a pool of water. She holds the jug with water spilling out of its mouth. The armored elves bow before her, describing a strange tablet. So this is actually a little hint. You have to read this tablet if you'd like to figure out how to do the elven ritual to get the final piece of the juggernaut armor. That's why I went ahead and read that there. It's going to be very relevant here in a sec. 
that little tablet basically describes to you exactly how to do the ritual. We just gotta find the jug in the fountain it's referring to, and then do as it's said. You fill the jug up, you take it before the altar, you take a drink, and then you go back to the pool, and you pour the remaining water back inside the fountain, like it's said, and I'll go on ahead and open the ritual chamber when we get there. I'm going towards the violence, I'm not sure if I should be, but here we are. Uh, this is actually where I'm going to show you how to get Arcane Warrior as a subclass. Okay, move it on back a little. Last to rip a thorn. Win. I also need you to move it back. I suppose you can stand up there. She's not pulling any aggro right now, so she's fine to just take it up there for a second. Right, here's a broken crate. It's actually kind of cool that I just leveled up Morrigan and talked about how I wanted to give her Arcane Warrior, because here's how you do it. Let's get started. This elaborate artifact has a gem-like structure that contains what appears to be blood. Fresh and liquid, even after all this time, the gem is vibrating slightly. Show the artifact to other party members. A device meant to hold a spirit, perhaps? Such would be my guess. Though, what might be left of any spirit within after such a long time trapped? This appears to be a phylactery of some kind. The essence of a mage kept magically preserved. If that were all it is, however, I would be surprised. Is that blood in there? Whose, I wonder? You think it would be all dried up after so long? There must be magic involved. What would you like to do? Touch the gem. The gem is warm to the touch, and your mind immediately begins swimming with visions, images and memories from a life not your own. The presence in the gem is at first alarmed when it senses your touch. It recoils in fear, and the images that rush your mind are ones of imprisonment and loneliness. Who are you? What are you? Presence thinks quickly, bewildered. Finally, it decides that you are indeed real and not a product of its fevered imagination. More images flash through your mind. Time that the presence has spent trapped within the life gem. Time where the presence has slept, gone mad, and then slept again. The presence has no name it can remember. You get the sense of an elf, a mage in glittering silver armor. This was long ago, remembered as if through a fog. What is this place? What happened here? The images that come are slow, as the presence must think back to a time it barely recalls at all. You see a place of serenity, where the eldest want, where the eldest come to slumber, and are visited by those who offer tribute to the gods on their behalf. The presence's memories of what happened there are uncertain. There are flashes of violence, of war, but it is all too long ago. None of it is clear. Was this a war with the humans? The presence remembers the humans. This was a time even after the humans had come. It was they who had built this place, long before. Perhaps the war was with other humans. Perhaps it was with something else. Something that killed both the humans and elves that were here. It is not clear. How did you end up in this gem? You see images of a great battle. Elves and humans both screaming and attempting to flee from some terrible presence. What that presence was is blurry and lost to time. The presence fled the destruction by using the life gem, escaping its body. It was sure that someone would come to rescue it, but no one did, not until now. How do I know you are not a spirit, tricking me? You see faint images of a mage holding the life gem and chanting in an unknown language. There are no other memories. The presence does not know how to prove this to you. You were once a mage. You see images again of the open silver armor, 
one who is mage and warrior both. The name for the order he belongs to translates in your mind to Arcane Warrior. What is an Arcane Warrior exactly? The presence remember, can remember little. You see images of an order of elven mages who channel their spells into their strength, fighting as Arcane Warriors to defend their charges. The presence could give you what knowledge remains within it of how to become an Arcane Warrior. You are not mage yourself, but you could teach such knowledge to those who are. This is all the presence has left to offer any longer, the last of its memories. In return, the presence asks only one thing from you, oblivion. You could teach me to become an arcane warrior. The image that the presence sends are desperate. It will give you what memories it has. Whoever follows the arcane warrior's path will be the last of its order. How would I give you the release you seek? The images that come are faint and uncertain. You see a stone altar and the life gem placed upon that altar. The life gem then vibrates and explodes, destroying the presence within forever. The yearning that follows this image is keen and almost hopeless. Yes, I will try to help you. The images become tinged with desperation. The presence cannot remember where the altar is, but it knows the life gem must be placed on it. Approach the stone altar with the gem. As the life gem nears the altar, the presence becomes overcome with emotion. Could its endless nightmare finally be over? The images that are sent to your mind depict a clear question. Do you still wish to learn the skills of the arcane warrior? The presence is ready to teach you now. Yes, give me your memories. The memories flood into your mind. They are hazy and incomplete, but enough for any mage to gather a few of the talents that the arcane warriors once possessed. Now the presence asks that you keep your promise, release it from its eternal prison. And of course, we are a man of our word, it held up its end, so we will hand the power end. You can be a complete asshole here, you can just put it in your pocket, or you can just toss the artifact back into the rubble and leave him here to rot forever. We're not going to do that, we're not going to give him the release he seeks. Place the artifact on the altar. The last images from the presence are ones of joy. Oblivion will be a welcome release. And now we have Arcane Warrior Unlocked. That's how you get the Arcane Warrior skill tree for mages. And basically what that does is it lets your magic replace your strength. And you can now equip all kinds of weapons and armor with your magic abilities. So you could have Morrigan in full plate mail at this point with the Asaris and she would be perfectly fine. She would hold up great with that build. <laughs> Arcane Warriors are very, very powerful, obviously, for obvious reasons. Now, somewhere... One way is the way I want to go, and the other way is the way I don't want to go. I guess we'll find out which is which as we progress, because I'm not sure. I think the way I want to go is actually back the other way. I already see the uh, ambush behind us being very sneaky, so I'm going to pull my mages back. I saw them on the mini-map up here. You won't be killing any of my mages today. Wonderful. Meridian helmets. Right. On it. I'm actually very excited to be heading to the deep roads soon. We're almost there. I think once we're done with Brazilian, I might go deal with the Flemeth encounter and then probably head to Orzammar. I don't want to do Orzammar last last like I usually do. I would like to see if I can make it work going that early. to deactivate traps when your party just likes to run into them and kill themselves. <laughs> Stun this guy. Alistair, if you'd be so kind as to go ahead and pop this. Mage friends are just gonna 
consistently activate every trap in the room, it seems. As soon as you click on it, you can click off it and go about your business. It's not going to set off once you hit that initial click. And tactician. Got an achievement there. Not even quite sure what tactician is for. Assume that's for a total number of kills or something. Adventurer's journal. Codex Unbound. We got a night corpse. Lots of cool blades and things and lore down in this temple. Right. Now let's pull up the map for a second. This door seems like it takes us back to where we've kind of already been. Okay, here's the deal. We're going to swing back real quick and go the other way that I didn't check yet. I believe this is the way to progress the main quest, but I don't want to miss the earthen jug, so... We're not going to do that just, just yet. There are a lot of hidden things down here that I'd like to get done in one run, so... Fortunately, that does mean we're going to have to be swinging up and down a lot. Another revenant fight down here. Don't want to miss those. I am looking to kill all these. There is no obvious order to this jumble of miscellanea, but one item stands out, a small glass phylactery. The area is unnaturally cold, dark shapes swirl around a slip of paper within the vial. Take the vial. The glass fractures at your touch. By now you all know the drill with these guys, so... He's gonna hit the tone, we're gonna hit the mark of death, and we're just gonna sit behind him and chop away. This one did manage to cast aura of weakness on us. Spam him from behind with all these. Hit him with as many abilities as he can. He's not gonna hold up very well to our party at this point. Got our mages in the background there, just hitting him with everything they have. And that's another one of the six or seven revenants that are in the game down. We got his scrap of paper and a greater health potion. Of course, we get his codex added to the list. Been reading all those out as we go. Now we want to swing right for a second. Okay, we already went there, so now we need to go up. I find myself getting turned around a lot when maps are laid out like that. But in general, I know where I'm going. We'll be fine. Right across to this door is where I want to be. That's the one place I didn't check so far. And of course, this is the place that I needed. Right, so this is going to be the Elven Ritual. This door won't open until you complete this ritual. It's very important. Like I said, we read the tablet to learn how to do this. So we got to examine the fountain first. The water in the pool appears cool and clean. It is refreshed from some internal source, perhaps magically. Submerged in the water is what appears to be a small earthen jug. Take the earthen jug. Fill the earthen jug with water. Now we're going to leave the pool alone. If you do this wrong, you will be attacked by shades, so... Go over to the altar now. Place the filled earthen jug on top of the altar. Kneel before the altar and pray. Okay, now we prayed. I believe now let's examine the earthen jug on the altar. Currently filled with water, so that's good. 
Now, take a single sip from the water in the jug. The single sip is very important. Now we take the sip. We take the earthen jug. Now we leave the altar alone. And like the uh, stone tablet said, now we just dump what's left in the jug back into here. Dump the water in the jug back into the pool. Slowly, you spill the water out of the jug back into the pool. As soon as the jug is empty, it suddenly shatters, the pieces falling into the pool. Quest completed, and now the doors are open. That is the little elven ritual we got from the tablet. And now we can come on in here and loot all this place off. So There's going to be a couple fights. Mainly we're in here for that last piece of juggernaut armor we've been looking for for Sten. It is very sexy. This should be easy it is, in my opinion, the best looking play in the vanilla game. Blood Dragon may be a close second. The Blood Dragon is DLC, so technically not vanilla. I can actually stand by very firmly with the Juggernaut armor. It's certainly the best looking play mail. Stuff that Alistair currently has equipped is a mod, as is my armor, so. Can't really compare it to that. There's, of course, no reasoning to be done with the spirit. Do you need help? Are you lost? I don't think she was much in the uh, mood to speak. Worth noting here that they are speaking Elven, but the models, whether this is a mistake or intentional, I'm not sure. The models of the characters are not elves, they're humans. The little boy that was looking for his mother is very much a human, and this model is also very much a human. So, I think that as you will, I suppose, we just ran into a huge spell of chain lightning. Alistair, let's have you take a sip. You're taking a lot of damage that I would not like you to take. Hey, we touched on it a little too with the uh, the phylactery. We were asking it questions, and it said that it didn't really know uh, what kind of battle went down here. But there was elves and humans both involved. So here's the juggernaut play. That's the last piece of that set. The new codex is Uthanara. We'll go ahead and read that after the episode. Yeah, whatever was going on here. It also said the humans built this place. These are Avar statues, the uh, men with the spears. We learn about that in one of the uh, DLCs. The Tevinta slash Avar statues. I'm not quite sure which one it is, I don't recall. Certainly not Elven, though. Then again, a lot of times, Elven things get mixed up with Tevinta things somewhere along the way, so you can never be really sure which one you're looking at. Alright, now we can just go all the way back down. Actually, almost to uh, the main confrontation. They certainly put a lot of bodies between us and the Witherfang. Well, this could have been avoided if Swift Runner was just willing to open his ears for 10 seconds. Trap! Trap! I will certainly take the more XP. to take that one. <laughs> Give my party a little wake-up call. Gotta warm up for the next fight. You can already see it looks like fun on the other side of this door. If you would be so kind. Wonderful. 
before. As you wish. I will say it's been a really smooth run so far. I'm outside of the crashes in Denerim. I haven't experienced much difficulty at all. I suppose this arcane horror right here could change my mind on that. <laughs> and there it is. Immediately causing me problems. Has me dangerously close to crashing, actually. Morrigan almost died there. Wow, let's be careful. Right, let's let's get a grip here for a second. Isn't him around though? We're clearly not gonna cut the cake. This is getting out of our control very quickly. Of course, right as I'm talking about how I haven't run into uh, many problems. <laughs> Alistair, I would like you to stop setting that nonsense off if you could. Okay, now all of our mages are dead. Boy, am I really, really glad that this game features an autosave function. <laughs> so, obviously, of course, as soon as I was talking about how I hadn't run into any issues down here, and the fight immediately went to hell, which I'll make sure and keep in. I won't edit that out. I'll let you guys see when I make mistakes. I'm not infallible. Not only did that happen, but then my game immediately ran like shit and crashed into oblivion. <laughs> Luckily, we do still have all the progress because it saved right before we came through the main door, so that's good at least. Now, one thing I do want to look at is I noticed that when Morrigan is running way up than she needs to. It's because of this little ability right here. So instead of her using that, we are going to make her use sleep instead. And hopefully sleep has a bigger distance and will behave itself for us. And Morrigan won't be like charging into the thick of every battle she sees to cast horror. I didn't notice that usually when she's running way too close, even though I like her to stay at a distance, it's to cast horror. Of course, that is supposed to be a spell you use when something is attacking you in melee, so it does make sense. Now, mechanically, I'd like to figure out what's causing this to go the way that it's going. Of course, we got hit with Paralyze. Alistair just hit a pawn. Make sure everything is attacking you here. I'll let Alistair and the mages do their thing with him, really, and then I'll just try and take care of the Pikmin. Whenever you do feel this getting a little dicey, you can always tab over to Morrigan and make her heal Alistair too, if you like your tanky. Take him more damage than you'd like. We are going to give this guy a mark of death real fast. He's running very low on health and he's still paralyzed, which is not good. He did manage to save his life a little, but he is still stunned. We immediately have him heal. That's just what that's going to take. Arcane Horror is almost dead. Right. 
and the horrors down. See, you just take your time a little. Go function and brainstem. When your mages don't charge into combat and your game doesn't crash, it all goes rather smoothly. This be also helps that I wasn't constantly setting off his little ritual with the uh, lightning bolts. Let's get started. Pile of rags, ruby, topaz, garnet, greenstone, ashen gloves, a crossbow, and the master slow rune. That's all very good. And you just saw how desperately bad I'm in need of more inventory space. I don't think we'll be finding a backpack merchant for a very long time, unfortunately. Uh, there is no uh, doorway to go this way. My brain is telling me that this is the non-way, so let's go the non-way. I don't want to go the correct way yet. We have loot to get. The show bow. As you wish. More lightning crystal. What tier is that? That is tier. Not gonna tell us actually, is it? Okay, let's destroy some stuff. You can go. You can go, and we'll take that. The only reason I'm so interested in taking those and not just walking away from all those is because I'm not sure what Shale needs. I'm just gonna pull everything and make sure that they always have what Shale needs. Right, let's get rid of some of this stuff. We won't need a lot of space. A couple. I had to pick that up for the codex. Right. Trade manifest. We'll be selling that to a merchant later. That's the bow. We don't need to worry about that. Like this, bastards. Let us end this. Yeah, we have more skellies. Got the sweep on everybody. We got paralyzed thanks to my rune. Done the shambling corpse. And that's the end of it. Here we have a dagger. Not interested in that. Always we'll take the diamond and the healing potions. This Templar made it very far in here. He had a floor spa. And now we have the lair of the werewolves. Alright guys, I think this episode has been going a pretty long time, so I'm probably going to wrap it up here. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please subscribe, leave a like and a comment. If you want to support the cause and help improve the channel, there is a tip link in the description below. Otherwise, stay tuned and I'll see you soon with more Dragon Age Origins. We'll go ahead and get the resolution to whatever's going on down here next episode. Take care guys, have a good day.